1975 because, you know, we've double cancer. Anxiety and glyphosate. Now we're getting over into oh, some, some research that's looking at something other than just the standard physiological. We're looking at anxiety and glyphosate. Look at the chart. Look at inflammatory bowel disease, IBS and glyphosate. Right? Now you ready for the next one? How about autism and glyphosate? Look at those two lines. Look at, look at the graph and look at the line. You see a correlation? It's amazing that people will not look at this. They will not research it. And there are people who believe it's perfectly safe. What about breast cancer and glyphosate? Look at the incidence. It's interesting about 19... Get over here to this area and suddenly it's five. And it's never been on five. It's absolutely incredible when you see the correlation. Well, that's an argument a lot of people use, man, is they say that, you know, that there's less testing and more people, these conditions were being identified in the past. Mm -hmm. But you look at the 90s. So that was, that incidence rose from 97 on. Yeah, the 90s. It's not just since the 70s, it's since 1991. Right. Exactly. Where the technology is available. It's not like it's not like it's missing. And look at Alzheimer's. First off, does, does, uh, does glyphosate get bypassed the blood brain barrier? It does. It does. Actually, does glyphosate destroy the blood brain barrier? Does it put holes in the blood brain barrier? Can glyphosate put holes in the blood brain barrier? It can. And it does. And that's one of the reasons that heavy metals cause Alzheimer's. They get to your brain. Glyphosate is used on the majority of corn, cotton, wheat, soybeans, and sugar beets. Now everybody knows what sugar beet is. You know, beets are good. Sugar beets, you know, they're full of glyphosate and it's white sugar. All white sugar contains is derived from sugar beets. Well, actually, that's what they are sugar derived from other things, but it's, it's standard sugar. Sucrose. Sugar beets. Hose down the glyphosate. Not only it, will it not wash off the plants or food, it's served to you in your meals, made in the clothes you wear, fed to the animals you eat, and ends up in your tap water, lakes, and your rivers. Oh, by the way, like uh, collagen supplements, gelatin supplements, highest concentration of glyphosate that you can possibly get are from collagen and from those types of supplements. Gelatin, like that you would buy at you know, at Knox gelatin, full of every time they test it. It's the highest level of testing of anything is, is gelatin because that's where it's deposited primarily in the fat tissues of those or the tissues of animals and the collagen and those, and those, those parts. Um, the, the animals are fed GMO glyphosate ridden food and then it's transferred to you. Once the glyphosate gets into your body, it's recognized by your body as glycine, L glycine. So it replaces L glycine in the body. So you end up with L glycine deficiency in what used to, in what now your glycine is wreaking havoc. Which is an amino acid found in your cells, your body then replaces your glycine with its foreign glycine look alike, and then it starts to replicate. Here's a study talking about non alcoholic fatty liver disease and liver cancer directly associated with glyphosate. And it's not just gly glyphosate either, atrazine. Anyone here heard of at atrazine? You know that guy, Alex Jones? Anybody know that guy? He's in all kind of trouble all the time. He runs, he's a, he, he's a, he's a what? Oh my goodness, that poor, that's that poor guy. He, he, his mouth is open on his own, right? Um, at the same time, they make fun of him about a whole lot of stuff. And, and he's worth making fun of about a lot of stuff. And one of the things they make fun of him about, I'm not talking about politics, I'm just talking about some guy. One of the, the things they make fun of him as, he keeps, they, they say he talks about the frogs are turning gay, right? right? The frogs are gay! He said, he, and it's, they replay this thing over and over and over to make fun of him how stupid he is. Well, the, the, the sad thing is, is that they actually uh, have studies on atrazine, similar to pesticides, showing that it definitely not only causes effeminization in male creatures, but actually causes those creatures to grow those other sex organs in some cases. Ricky Lab. Autism and learning disabilities. Here's the possible link between autism and glyphosate acting as lysine. See, that's one of the reasons that we have these issues with autism and one of the problems that we're having with children with uh, any type of autism spectrum, you know, Asperger's, whatever, they, they're, they're having problems with their glycine. L-glycine supplementation a lot of times will help those children. 
why did they need glycine to begin with? All right, birth defects, low birth weight, and premature birth, <coughs> all associated, all linked to the observations made regarding glycine. That's one of the issues, too, that um, some folks that we know in our area. Now, when you look at that chart of the, of the uh, plant, the early use of glyphosate and the use you know, more currently, and you saw you saw the, the uh, dark brown and orange coming down into Alabama. Well, unfortunately, the two counties that we live, love, and, and care for the most, and are in the most, are the two counties with the most glyphosate use because they're agricultural areas. There's a ton that's being used and sprayed, and there's also a ton of birth defects. Now, this talks about the link between birth defects and gut bacteria. We all know that if you're not healthy in your gut, then you're going to be sick. But not many people know that there's a direct link to not being right in your gut and your child having birth defects. We have a lot of birth defects in our area. Um, and no, it's not just because we're from Alabama. Uh, glyphosate crosses the blood brain barrier. Here we talk about the effects of glyphosate and amino, amino uh, methyl glucosamine acid on the isogenic model of the human blood brain barrier. This is where it goes into discussion and over here on the next one we talk about um, also vaccine. We talk about how glyphosate will cause damage. What's glyphosate designed to do? Kill. 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 Not let things live. So we have a we have a problem when we're starting to consume things. Now see they were supposed to have tested, it's supposed to have been safe. If you go to the EPA's website right now, it'll actually say glyphosate is safe for use, even though the EPA is currently literally having to go to court for manipulating data, lying, and covering up on those tests. Tests for glyphosate and childhood vaccine positive. We have yet to find a multi-dose vaccine that does not have glyphosate. There's not. Why would that be? Well, now one one factor is gelatin. When you have a, when you have constituents such as gelatin, when you have some, but it's really hard for me to believe that no more gelatin than they have in the vaccine that they that it would have enough glyphosate to be detected as, easy, as easily as they're detected. And why is every multi-dose vaccine they test have glyphosate? What about thyroid disease and thyroid cancer? How many people here have just well, you just not to raise your hand, but how many people here have heard? thyroid disease mentioned in the past month. It's, it's amazing. So many people are dealing with thyroid disease. Um, and it's not just, it, it's so strange. You'll have people with border, you'll have people just more traditional. I, I, the other day I got a book in the, that was written in 1934, and it was talking about border. It was actually from, a, what's the company that uh, that makes the, uh, the original glandular thyroid armor? Because the original armor book, 1934, it's pretty cool. Um, but it was talking about thyroid disease back then. Of course, you didn't have the autoimmune thyroid disease, even mentioned by the one company that produced the one thyroid that was available at the time. Thyroid cancer. What about obesity and endocrine disrupting male feminization and female masculinization? What? Female masculinization? Male feminization? Endocrine disrupting? All of this. All of these have been studied. All of this has been attributed and been shown to be the case with glyphosate, and that's one of the reasons that we have so much of a pull to get this off the market. Now we're talking about aluminum glyphosate can synergistically induce pineal gland pathologies. There's a connection to your probiotics. Now, now we're getting into the pineal gland. How would glyphosate affect the pineal gland if glyphosate did not bypass the blood brain barrier? So we know it bypasses the blood brain barrier. We know that it is actually that's adding to the calcifying of the pineal gland. What else calcifies the pineal gland? And once again, we're not talking about the third eye, the blue hook, folks, you know, uh, witchcraft medicine or whatever. We're talking about you know, clinical studies. What calcifies the pineal gland? Does fluoride calcify the pineal gland? Yeah. Where do we find fluoride? Everywhere. Now, why would we not want our pineal glands to be calcified? Why do we not want hard and crusty? Little pineal glands in the center of our brain. See, now you just need to go over the pineal gland. <laughs> um, and the pineal glass is much better than the last one you went through. 
I'm sure there are other classes that could also link that too. Anxiety and depression. Now that we're talking about linking glyphosate to anxiety and depression, here we have a study that's talking about gut microbes. Now, every time you hear about some sort of pathology regarding, except for the blood brain barrier, which we can go back and get also, you're talking about the gut. What do you think overall glyphosate does to the human gut? Well, what, what, what is glyphosate designed to do? Right. Heal. That's it. It's not designed to heal. It's not designed to entertain. You know, we don't have glyphosate so that we can, you know, uh, get smarter. We get it so that it kill things. You know, it's the prep, the, in particular, you know, killing um, other plants or other leaves. But look at Parkinson's. Look at the research about Parkinson's and Glyphosate. Now we're getting neurological issues. Investigation has shown that exposure to pesticides is a risk factor for Parkinson's disease. Our findings support the notion that glyphosate exposure might be related to the onset of Parkinson's disease, actually causing Parkinson's. Now, would this be probably common among people who worked in farms and were directly working with it? Well, what about someone who just drinks a ton of French wine? Possibly the same. Now look at what the EPA, now Environmental Protection Agency, how much work does the Environmental Protection Agency do to help us protect our environment? Is that what it's about? Well, they say there's no risk of concern. They say they say the guy in Boaz was dead on. You know, five ounces straight down the hatch. You're gonna be fine. Uh, they, oh, you know, it's not meant to drink or consume, but at the same time, consuming what is consuming. It's in everything. Who owns the majority of farmland in the United States as an individual? Right. Who's been writing the bill of the Bayer Monsanto burger? Who owns massive shares in almost every aspect of genetically modified foods? Bill Gates. So interesting. Yeah, the guy, you know, the operating system guy, Windows. I remember that. I remember I thought, that guy is a genius. Well, he didn't design that operating system, you know? And for some reason, now he can farm. And he talks about population control. And he loves vaccines. So everything's cool. No worries there. That spray also travels up to three miles and lands on everything along the way. Whether it's your child riding the bike outside, your barbecue grill, your swimming pool, your dog park, your kids playground, your organic neighbors' marbles, or anything within three miles of the spray. And we teach school on Thursday. We taught all day before we came here, right? So I'm in there in the class, and we are so small, we have about 25 to 30 students total. And of those students, we, I, I'm in, I was in the high school class, and our boys are big boys. We have some big guys in the class. When you walk into the school, there's one entrance that no one's supposed to go into, they always go into, and it's right beside the police department, which is normally not a problem. But you don't normally need to bust into a school in Alabama these days without being announced. Of course, you know, our school has like guns in it. <laughs> I mean, we have like, and we have kids that like, we have the boys like carry blades and stuff. So, so this person comes into this door and our biggest boy intercepted him, you know, which is he can see people as they come in. And then of course I was right there with him to intercept the guy too. And it's a guy who worked with Leesburg City Park. He, he was a, in, in the maintenance. And he came in and he said, I just wanted you to know that those elementary kids are down there playing at the park and I just got them spraying. And they don't need to be messing with them trees. And I just looked at him and I looked over at the kids in the park and of course we're gonna leave in the trees and um, <laughs> you know, eating the trees and each other and whatever. And uh, pretending to the trees with guns and all this stuff. And so I, I looked at him and I said, why did you spray it with him? He said, oh, right. And of course, <laughs> I'm hollering for the administrator. I'm like, Jennifer, they sprayed it with Grandpa. And so, you know, they, we obviously sterilized the kids as uh, best we could. <laughs> now, and, and, and now, of course, we're going to be at City Hall, uh, you know, doing our thing. They're think we're getting this anyway. So we're going to be like, hey, guys, can we take over? The, and we're, you know what we're going to do? We're going to take care of the park. We're going to spray the park. They can weed eat and they can come out and weed eat, but we're gonna let them, we're gonna spray our own stuff. What's interesting is something about berberine too. How many people here know that berberine in and of itself is a pesticide herbicide? 
How many people here know that the berberine has been shown to help get glyphosate out of the body, even at the blood brain barrier? How weird is that? So that's, that's so cool. On June the 17th, 2022, now when was that? That's not long ago, right? The appeals federal, not judicial uh, appeals court, said that the EPA shrinked its, shirked its duties in glyphosate cancer ruling. So we uh, now know that they were not following their own guidelines for environmental safety with their refusal to admit glyphosate is a cancer causing agent. Now we know that Monsanto doesn't bribe people. They've never been caught doing that, right? Of course, we can assume that they do because they have. And here we find that for some reason they shirk their duties. Why would the EPA shirk their duties? So we, we kind of know that there's a problem, right? Does everybody here pretty much agree that we got a problem here? And the problem can be fixed, right? Our president even though his people are whispering in his ear that it can be fixed and then that we can get cancer out within the next, what, 25 years? Do you think now maybe it could happen? Because this stuff can actually get out of our world. We can get this at least in massive concentrations and lower levels. But how do we remove this from our bodies? Okay, you can actually do it. You can, you can get, I mean, you can, you can take a test, Great Plains Laboratories can say, hey, you got lots of the roof on that. And then you can, you can do some things and you can test again and you can have little to no lot of to do. So this is all good. Now, you can use a sauna or get outside and sweat. A lot of people don't like to do that. But one of the things that I noticed, I had a fellow who was involved in the early Agent Orange uh, lawsuits against Monsanto. And he bought a sauna, he bought an infrared sauna. And that was the first thing that he realized actually gave him massive level. He said basically if he could spend 30 minutes in the sauna a day, especially 30 minutes twice a day, that every aspect of his health was better. Period. Then if he missed the sauna, he felt like work. Once again, now, how do you get by the well? Probably avoiding the gelatin-based vaccines. Avoiding white table sugar, use cane sugar instead. Organic cane sugar. Here's the thing. If it says USDA organic, it has a 90% likelihood of being truly organic and not having any glyphosate. That's the best thing. They have to go to such strict and stringent guidelines to get that USDA stamp that that's actually normally <laughs> Good. Now, some people will just lie and they'll stick a USDA you know, organic stamp on the product and they'll say it's organic. So you have to know what you're getting. And one of the ways to do it is to go on these websites to actually look and monitor and, and test for themselves. Like, uh, for example, Aldi, uh, uh, Trader Joe's, uh, Whole Foods, they all tested extremely poorly with extremely high levels of glyphosate in their food. Uh, don't use Roundup. That's a no brainer. Uh, don't turn up five ounces of it. Don't let anyone use Roundup anywhere near your home. Those are all things that you could do. Now, those are some proactive things. Limit your intake of glyphosate by eating organic foods. Uh, the best is, I mean, next best after organic is non-GMO. Try to get that, what I said about the organic. Be careful with the meat that you eat. As most cattle and chickens are fed glyphosate saturated crops, eat only organic meat or chicken. Be sure your tap water is purified. That is, and you can also, that Great Plains Laboratory, if you have a well or something, uh, they'll test your well water or your drinking water for glyphosate. And he, he'll help you understand a lot more. Um, at a restaurant, ask for bottled water and detoxify, detox glyphosate from your body regularly. How are we going to detox glyphosate from our body? I know I'm saying detox so much. Here we go. What? Actually, you wrote detox. Yeah, you didn't tell me not to use the words. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean the reason I don't use the word in our literature is because it's just so so overused. What supplements help it? Fulvic acid. Who knows what fulvic acid is? The more you know, sometimes the more it's peculiar it seems. Uh, but basically, they've done, they've done studies with fulvic acid. Um, when you're talking about fulvic acid, you're talking about chronic inflammation, uh, it's really difficult because fulvic acid contains trace minerals, it contains probiotics, it contains a lot of constituents uh, that help with the gut floor, but also work to have a negative ionic charge to help get things out of the system. Um, this talks about folic acid. 
which contains humic acid, is a small molecule that can be absorbed in the bloodstream to help bind glyphosate in the tissue, while humic acid is larger and has more impact on binding glyphosate in the intestine. Our findings indicated here that humic acid inhibits the antimicrobial effect of glyphosate on different bacteria, and they're talking about the health thing, obviously, but it's in different forms. Now, this fulvic acid is not just being used to get glyphosate out of the human body. It's also being used to get glyphosate out of crops for people who want to plant an organic crop that don't contain glyphosate. What about midnight clay? Now, this is cool. We didn't find the video, but did we? Deborah and I were watching a BBC video about the Amazon. And it was really cool. Um, we watch stuff like that because we can't watch regular TV. And, and we're watching this video, and it was showing this interesting phenomenon where these parrots would fly down into this mud pit, along with all these predators, these horrible creatures that it, you know that they cherish, but otherwise it's not going to be anywhere near. But these parrots would go there against their all their intelligence whatsoever, against their nature, and they would eat the mud, and they'd eat the mud along with the monkeys and, and the cheetah and the other creatures, the predators that are coming out there to munch on the mud, and they don't know why. Why are all these animals from all these different areas making this journey to come down and eat mud? Well, they weren't eating mud, they were eating clay. And they weren't eating regular clay, they were eating midnight clay. They said on the documentary, of course, me and Deborah were like jumping out of our seats and acting like crazy people because it was, it was so bad. They, they said that because of industrialization and Man's basically coming in on the Amazon, and those creatures that will leave. I know some of them are in a. We went to a national park in Costa Rica and realized that all you got to do to see monkeys is hang out outside the park where the trash bins are. Because guess what the monkeys do? There's trash monkeys. They're the smart monkeys. Like a little gang of trash monkeys leave the national park, go out to the, you know, go out to the dumpster, and then guess what? You can hang out with monkeys. But the bit night play, they're going down to these mud pits along with all these predators and things that can kill them. Predators like not even paying attention to them, they're getting all this mud and they're flying off. Why? Because people are moving in on them. The chemicals are getting into their systems. They're eating, and they even said this on the news, they said it, it has something to do with detoxification. And so it's like, okay, you yeah, detoxification, right? That word that they can't stand, but they you know, can't have to use it. They're detoxing. They're doing it through midnight clay. Midnight clay has an extreme negative charge to it. Uh, it's like a magnet. So, you know, midnight clay is traveling through the body, and all of a sudden this heavy metal's here. <laughs> Heavy metal goes and they leave the body with a midnight clay. Glyphosate too. So it says here that glyphosate, um, or here we have midnight clay as a natural remedy. Then we have the effect of suspended midnight clay on the acute toxicity of glyphosate um, in this particular area. So we're talking about inhibition. Oh no, we're in the berberine. We're talking about midnight and fulvic acid working together to bind food with the negative charge to glyphosate, along with the heavy metals. And what does glyphosate? allow into the blood brain barrier heavy metals. So here we have an inhibition of activated protein one activity by berberine. Now we're getting over to berberine, which berberine, strangely enough, is in and of itself to be used in, in research. And it's really hard to do research on berberine for glyphosate when berberine is a competitive pesticide herbicide to glyphosate in agriculture. Literally, you can take yellow root tea, supposedly, hose your plants down with it, and it'd be an effective pesticide herbicide, but you can also take berberine, or take a plant that contains, ber contains berberine like barberry or yellow dock or uh, goat and seal or yellow root, and you can take that, and it helps your body to eliminate glyphosate from your system. Pretty awesome. Um, here in the group, we have uh, liver cell lines that are protected um, and help, and actually, this is, this is interesting. This is when berberine is actually protecting against your liver cell death um, from glyphosate exposure. Here we have uh, manganese. Now, one of the things, too, that glyphosate has been proven clinically to do is to reduce your levels of manganese in the system. Now, not magnesium, but manganese, another mineral. Now, what, what are some of the problems that are associated with the deficiency of manganese? Apathy. Yeah. Apathy? Mm -hmm. What about tinnitus? Manganese is one of the first things that we've been recommended for the past decade for tinnitus. And normally it will completely just do a flip. Somebody could be dealing with tinnitus for years and they'll turn around and just start taking a little bit of manganese. They'll be completely straightened out. Now why would that be? 
do they do they do they have a natural manganese deficiency? You know, did Adam, along with the CPAP machine, wake up and say, "Hey, honey, this thing is a fit and right, and plus I feel like I'm low on manganese." No, we get a manganese deficiency because of what they're doing to us, because of what we're putting into our body that's inorganic and that's causing havoc, like glyphosate. Here we talk about pathways to the motor disease. We talk manganese. We talk about neurological diseases associated with manganese deficiency and associated pathologies. Now, look at here. Now we're talking about herbs. Maddie, here's my herb. Right. <laughs> milk thistle seed, civil America. Our folks are familiar with milk thistle and its potent effects on liver intoxication and so forth. Um, dandelion root. Once again, we're talking about the liver, cleansing, detoxification, burdock root, L glycine, and probiotics. Now, obviously, probiotics, this entire conversation, you would be seeing a need, a pretty significant need for probiotics when it comes to this. We also need to supplement our glycine. So we need to detox the glyphosate from our system. We need to get use elements such as bentonite and fulvic acid to attract the glyphosate to it, bind to it. We need to work on our body, especially our liver, to help basically speed up and to help basically promote faster detoxification, but also to be able to handle the detoxification. What happens when somebody you know, just starts taking tons of midnight play and they don't do anything else? They're going to feel terrible. They're going to bloat it. No matter what you eat. Yeah, and you better be careful with midnight play because you know those parents probably learned you eat too much of that stuff and if you get contaminated, midnight play in and of itself can contain what? Heavy metal because midnight play attracts heavy metal. So if you're you know if you're not dealing with an organic midnight play or at least one that they you know, it's very difficult to find an organic. But if you don't find a trusted source of midnight, then you, end, you can end up giving yourself the heavy metals that you're trying to get rid of. You're using organic in kind of a generic sense there? Like well, yeah, because you have to. I mean, you, you, like for example, um, Garden of Life sells an organic midnight clay, right? They're also one of the 14 companies that's gobbled up every nutraceutical company on the planet. You know, they're not, they're not even owned by the same people who started them. So you have to take everything with a grain of salt, and that's when you go over into the glyphosate testing. Now, we have a lab, once again, we can send them anything, and they'll test the glyphosate. So that's one of the ways we're doing it. If all else fails, make sure that you get tested before you use them. So that's the end show. Basically, we have a situation where, because of politics, and because of uh, the media, and because of so many different things that's going on, we're ignoring major health problems in major factors that are definitely impacting human health and human life. What do you guys think would happen if glyphosate is removed from the market completely and entirely? What do you think would happen? Do you think human health would improve globally? Do you think our incidence of cancer, you know, if we start eliminating that and other, other cofactors, do you think our incidence of cancer might decrease? You know, we, we might just make that cancer moonshot. You know, Biden may just uh, be right about that. And I would, I, would, I would hope that he is. But when, when we've developed a formulation that, that has basically, we've been taking it ourselves, um, I've lost probably an inch or two of my waist just since we've been doing the detox. And, the, and it's interesting because as you're doing it, um, you, you feel better and you feel cleaner. And then you start getting away from the glyphosate containing products. And then before you know it, you're a coffee snob, you're an egg snob, you're whatever snob because you can't have anything but the organic. Because every time, I, you know, the coffee here was fine, but literally it tastes like acid compared to the coffee, you know, that's made out of the land. Yeah. Well, now you have me worried about even foraging because that's what we're doing. Well, what we do, what, what, what we decided in our personal life, we have, we have dollars. I, I have a lot to say babies. I have children. They've actually found that glyphosate is causing children's heads to be smaller. Their little noggins are, are, are smaller. Their faces are smaller. If you look at, you, 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 you'll find that's the case. It's, it's, it's amazing what's happening to our kids in so many different levels. And, and these kids, I was raised on glyphosate. I mean, I was literally born when they made it. So I, I, have, I have several issues in my health that I can attribute to the toxicity of glyphosate. And I'm still, I still have glyphosate. Um, far less than I did before. But what's really neat is we talk often about yellow root and, and 
so plentiful where we live. The yellow rays is one of the key. We, we, we're using a lot of midnight clay, fulvic acid, and yellow rays. Uh, we also use the complementary herbs and the complementary things that, are, that we're doing to make sure our livers are able to do the cleansing and, and, and detox. What we're finding is we're giving it to our children, we're giving it to other children, we're giving it to adults, we're giving it to seniors. You have to take it up. People who want one pill, you know, pop one pill a day, you really like they never do it. People who want to take two pills a day, you want to get rid of life, they never do it. Take about 12 capsules a day or something that's actually designed to detox it. You're probably more likely to actually get rid of it. But you also need to know what you're doing. And we, we look, and it seems like most of these formulations that people have, there's all this, um, the, these companies that are coming out with all these different products, and, and they're, they're trying to, to, to sort of say that they get rid of glyphosate, but they're not really looking at the research. They're not really looking at what not only can bind to the glyphosate, but actually get it out of your system. And you're not doing the supportive herbs, you're not doing things like burdock, which every one of those botanicals, we have clinical, there's clinical zones um, on burdock, on you know, thistle seed, uh, on all of them. So we're, we're finding that you can get rid of this. You know, you, we can get rid of glyphosate by getting rid of glyphosate. We can stop using glyphosate by stop using glyphosate, and we can get glyphosate out of our system by taking the things that bind to it and eliminating our system. So the whole thing is doable. People just have to care and want to do it. I can tell you this. I have 15-year-old daughters. They're twins. They're going to turn 16 at the same time in January. And that age is an interesting age when it comes to hormones, personalities, attitudes, and things. I, 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 I actually accept that. <laughs> I accept that because I have to because I'm, 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 I'm doing it. I guess I won't be able to handle it. They had such a marked improvement this year. They started basically the glyphosate cleanse. Um, environmental defense system, what we call it, right before school started back. And their, their grades, their attention, their attitudes, everything I had up there. Of course, we talk about things at home that most people don't talk about. Like, hey, how many times do you poop today? You know, that's a common conversation in our home. Um, but it's important. You know, ask your kids how many times they're going to the bathroom. Because half the time, parents will ask their kids. The kids will say, oh, I don't go every day. I, I've only gone once in the past three or four days. Imagine what's happening to poor kids. You know, they're full of they're full of chemicals. They're full of all the things that they don't need to be, and they hardly have anything in them that they need to. They like, you know, they're, they're chicken. I want wings. I want boneless wings. Think about that. There's foods that, that the, the name of the food is a lie, right? Because people are so disillusioned and messed up about what the food even is anymore. Boneless wings? No. Those are processed chicken strips that have been fried. There was no, there was no winger ball in balls, you know, and then we're going boneless wings. I'm like, it's amazing. So, so our kids are being raised on boneless wings, you know, while they get filled full of glyphosate. We need something.